Hey everyone. So I've been getting a lot of messages and a lot of uh, emails about, you know, mRNA, about the mRNA vaccine, about COVID-19. Uh, but most of them are focused on the idea of, hey, how is it possible that we have this vaccine for COVID-19 within a couple of months when we don't even have vaccines for, you know, HIV and for hepatitis C and they've been studied for years, decades, right? And that's a good question. And, you know, while we have been able to create vaccines for hepatitis A, hepatitis B, smallpox, right, polio, um, hepatitis C and HIV remain elusive, and they're still working on those things. But let's focus on this idea of using this uh, modified RNA as a vaccine. Well, that work is not recent. As a matter of fact, the concept goes back to the 90s, okay? You, you can look up um, a female scientist her name is uh, Catalin uh, Kerico. Uh, she's a Hungarian-born scientist who was uh, working here in the United States. And she was really interested in the idea of using RNA as a way to deliver it to cells, to tell the cells to do something different, okay? That is easier said than done. She spent years and years trying to figure out how to get this to work. Um, she was actually on her way to becoming a full professor. So in research, you go from being an instructor to an assistant professor, to an associate professor, to a full professor. So she was an associate professor on her way to becoming an, a, a full professor, but she couldn't get the grants. She couldn't get private grants. She couldn't get NIH grants to continue funding her idea of how to use this RNA to tell the cells what to do. So she actually ended up dropping from being an associate professor back down to an assistant professor. That's a huge devotion. A lot of people would have basically, and a lot of people in the similar situation basically say, you know what, that's it, I'm done, I'm out of academic medicine, I'm gonna go do something else. But she continued to work really hard. She ended up uh, eventually collaborating with one of her uh, longtime collaborators over the University of Pennsylvania. I believe that was a Dr. Drew Weissman, right? So Dr. Drew Weissman and her continued to use their minds and try to figure out what they could do and they came up with a brilliant idea. What was happening was that when they would introduce this RNA to try to do it, let's say in the form of like a vaccine, they would introduce it into a patient or introduce it into mice, the mice would develop this big immune response to it. So the question became, how do you keep humans from developing an immune response to this foreign RNA? And they ended up coming up with something called what? Modified RNA, okay? So they basically were able to take RNA, which are just basically strands of nucleosides, okay? And they were able to take them, modify one of them in a way to trick the immune system to say, hey, you know what, I'm gonna let you pass. And so they were able to get that modified RNA to go into the cells. So they got past the big idea or the big barrier of how to keep the immune system from attacking that RNA. And that was back in, I believe, like 2005 or so was when that happened. And so there were some other scientists, young scientists that saw that and read that and said, you know what? I think that that has huge potential. And so you started to get a number of scientists together and you started to get what? That it's actually what led to the creation of the company Moderna, which again, is basically stands for modified RNA. Now let's just bring that back full circle. The great thing about Catalan Carrico who again was demoted because of her inability to get grants, because of this crazy idea of using RNA. Well, guess what? She is now one of the senior VPs, BioNTech. Well, BioNTech is the company that Pfizer partnered with in order to create their modified RNA vaccine for COVID-19. So she now is directing the modified RNA portion of the BioNTech company. And that is just an example of what hard work can do, diligence, staying at it. And honestly, if these, this new technology again, which has been in the works for decades, if it ends up being successful and it ends up being the way that we overcome this COVID-19 pandemic, then the Nobel Prize should go to Carrico and Weissman.